So welcome to my class on Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. My name is Klaus Brenner and I'm a professor at the Leibniz University Hanover in Germany. So what you see here is our small robot which will both fit with a laser scanner or LiDAR and which will run on the ground and detect landmarks such as this one. And using data from this robot you will learn about techniques such as extended Kalman filter and particle filter slam. The class is completely self-contained and you won't need anything else than a Python installation and the code snippets which are provided in this class. So now let's have a look at what you learn in each unit. In unit A we will introduce our robot and the LiDAR scanning sensor and our arena containing cylindric landmarks. We will steer the robot through this arena and record the motor control and LiDAR scans. We will then set up a motion model and determine the trajectory of the robot from the motor control data. Then we will turn to the robot's LiDAR data. We will analyze each scan in order to find the cylinders in the scene and we will develop an algorithm for that. Finally, we will reproject the detected cylinders into the scene and compare them with the cylinder positions given in our map. In Unit B, we will assign the landmarks in the map to the cylinders we detected in the scans, based on their proximity. Then we will use those point pairs for a least squares estimation of a similarity transform in the plane, for which we will give a non-iterative solution. Based on that, we will correct the trajectory of the robot. The result shows that while our approach works, it yields a pretty jagged trajectory. Since the number of observed features, or cylinders, is sometimes too small, we will have a look at another featureless technique where we assign points on the fence of our arena to the nearest possible partners and determine the transformation using an algorithm called iterative closest point. This leads to a better looking trajectory although at the expense of a more costly algorithm. In Unit C we start to look at filtering by modeling the uncertainty of the robot using probability distributions. We first study the effect of robot movement on the distribution and will determine that the robot's uncertainty grows as it moves. Then we will have a look at measurements where we will conclude that they have the opposite effect. They reduce the uncertainty in the robot's state. Combining a movement or prediction step with a measurement or correction step, we introduce a filter called the base filter. We then have a look at what happens if we use a specific probability distribution, namely the Gaussian or normal distribution, and derive the so-called Kalman filter for the one-dimensional case. In Unit D, we first look at the multivariate normal distribution and then we find out how the Kalman filter from Unit C generalizes to the multidimensional case. We then recapitulate our robot motion equation and, since this is nonlinear, we introduce the extended Kalman filter. In order to use the Kalman filter, we need to compute the derivatives of the motion equation with respect to the state and we also need the derivatives with respect to control. After we compute all of this, we obtain the robot's trajectory based only on the prediction step and we see that the error in position and heading grows unboundedly. Now the second step in the Kalman filter is the correction or measurement and we also have to compute the derivative of the measurement equation with respect to the state. After we implement this second step, we finally obtain the Kalman filter trajectory, prediction and correction well, the error is not unbounded anymore. In Unit E, we will have a first look at the particle filter, which represents the distribution by a set of hypothetical states or particles. The implementation of the prediction step is rather easy and as expected, we obtain a set of particles which diverge. We will then have a look at the correction step, which involves the computation of an importance factor or weight and an important sampling of particles based on this weight. Having implemented all this, we see that the particle filter is able to recover the trajectory of the robot even if it does not know the initial state. In Unit F, we will start with mapping. Now, no map of landmarks will be given in advance. Instead, 
the robot will simultaneously localize itself and produce a map. We will first treat this by extended common filter slam, where the locations of the landmarks become part of the filter state. Based on the extended common filter of unit D, we modify the equations and derivatives for the prediction or movement step. And since the robot now produces the map, there must be a mechanism to modify the robot state when landmarks are added. We will also modify the measurement equation, which describes the relationship between the pose of the robot and the position of the landmark, which are now both part of the robot state. The final result then shows how the positions and errors of both of the robot and the landmarks evolve while the robot explores the arena. Unit G is about particle filter slam. We will see how a factorization trick allows us to split the posterior into a term for the robot's pose, which we will represent using particles, and another term for the positions of all landmarks, which we will represent by individual extended Kalman filters, where each particle holds a set of filters, one for each landmark. In the measurement update, we will either initialize a new or update an existing landmark and we will also add code to remove spurious landmarks which are not consistently observed. This will finally lead to an implementation of the particle filter slam algorithm. So again, welcome to this class and I hope you'll join me for unit A right away.